importance of CO2 to climate. In the atmosphere, the way it works, or the way the temperature of the Earth works, that's, yeah, is the sun, all of that heat comes from the sun. It comes in, and our atmosphere is like a blanket over the Earth, and it keeps some of that radiation bounces in and bounces back out, and some of that is trapped by the atmosphere. It acts sort of like a blanket. Now, if we put more CO2 in the atmosphere, it traps it as if we put on an extra blanket. So we're increasing that, that um, the amount that bounces back in. And so, of course, we're going to get warmer. You put on another blanket, you get warmer. You're not actually making more energy. You're simply keeping more of it close to you. And that's what CO2 is doing in the atmosphere. OK. So the thing that's been in the, in the um, news and the thing that we hear a lot about is man-made CO2. And I want to start right at the beginning with man-made CO2. Because where does it really come from? Well, we're burning fossil fuels. So I'm going to start right at the beginning. It really came from photosynthesis. And before I go any further, I want you, most people think about photosynthesis as being the things that forests do. We keep talking about cutting down the forests. What I want you to think about is not the forests, but the ocean. Because more than half of the photosynthesis on the Earth happens in the ocean. So I've got here, when we think about ocean plants, most people think about algae and um, uh, kelp and things like that. Actually, most of the CO2 is done by these little microscopic guys we call phytoplankton, the microalgae. And so it's all being done by these little microalgae in the surface of the ocean. They get a lot of um, light from the, from the sun. And the CO2 goes in. And they process it. And they make what I call biomass. I'm not really a biologist. I'm really a chemist. So all this beautiful biology, all those beautiful algae that half of our department studies, to me, they're biomass. They just make organic matter. So you're converting sunlight and CO2, using sunlight to convert CO2 to biomass. Where does that come in? Where does um, oil come in? Well, once they're done and they die, basically the bottom of the ocean serves as kind of a giant compost bin. Because only the photosynthesis can only go on in the surface ocean. Everyone know, I hope everyone here knows that the bottom of the ocean is very dark. So all that's going on there is basically <laughs> processing of that organic matter. And you know that if you put all your good food scraps and all of that into a compost bin, after long storage, it becomes nice, what we would call humus or whatever. But after really long storage, it became oil. 100 million years ago, thousands, billions and billions, I hate that term, billions and billions of little organisms died. They sank to the bottom of the ocean, and then they sat there for millions of years, and we ended up with, with oil. We call that a sink. That's where it comes from the title. When you put something in storage for a long time in the Earth system, we call it a sink. Things sink in there, and they stay there. 